Hi, this is Mike Lively, and I recently took the AZ305, finished it in 15 minutes, and made a score of 935. And one of my meetup members said, Mike, how did you do that? And I said, ha, I was as surprised as you. So let me go through some of the techniques that I use. But first, a disclaimer. No question is shown in this presentation were taken from the actual AZ305 certification exam and are only meant for illustration purposes. They were found available online or written by ChatGPT. If you want to join the meetup, here's the link below. And I hope you enjoy this presentation. Just a little bit about myself. I started this meetup about a year and a half ago. We have about 740 members. During that time, it was during the time of COVID, and I was supposed to go back in the office, and I wasn't able to because COVID had resurged. And my wife said, you got to do something different, boy. So I thought, well, I can start a meetup. And at that time, I had eight certifications and thought that was really great. I thought I can teach someone how to get a certification. And after a year and a half, I now have 24 certs and counting in AWS, Azure, Google, Terraform, et cetera. I'm also a Microsoft certified trainer. It just goes to show you when you try to bless someone, you are doubly blessed. Uh, I presently work for a Fortune 500 company in the Cincinnati area. About 12 years ago, I started as a front-end and .NET developer, moved up to a DevOps tech lead and scrum master, moved up to a QA architect. And they had me do some training courses for the company and went, whoa. And moved me over to the PMO, and now I'm manager of training and documentation presently. Previously, I've worked in government for the EPA education for numerous educational universities and the military. I was a captain in the United States Air Force. Just a little bit about the AZ-305 exam. It's like very broad, but about an inch deep. And so I found it very challenging to study for. And what I did new for this exam was I used actually what I call brain browsing using chat GPT and DALI-E2. I was a little bit concerned because I studied, was studying in a way I'd never studied before. I thought, am I going to flunk this thing? I even thought a few days before the exam, I, I'm, I'm going to delay this. But I decided not to. I'm glad I did. Uh, when I cr go to take an exam, there's two things that I actually do. First, I create a study plan. And I have certain question techniques that I use. So in a study plan, I have this goal. And the goal is to learn as much as possible in the shortest amount of time with hands-on, you just don't want to be a paper dragon, and pass. If you learn all this stuff and you, and you say, why? I studied for a long time. I learned a whole lot, but you fail. It just wasn't worth it. You need to also pass. And don't be a paper dragon. Make sure you get this hands-on. We'll talk about that in a moment. Now, in this study plan, I have four things that I do. One, I typically have a video course or a Microsoft Docs that you'll go through. I have a hands-on. And you can use WizLabs or you can use Terraform. It's typically what I do. So I have a WizLabs. I may run something in WizLabs, and then I'll go, okay, how would I do that in Terraform? I'll go into ChatGPT and say, write the code in Terraform. It will, and I'll test it out and run it in the Azure Shell. And if you haven't used the Azure Shell, I have some videos on that. It's just really easy to use. Then you want to look at study exam-like questions. That's right. You don't want to go in there and not know what the exam is going to look like. Okay. And I've got to tell you, I have been in exams where they've asked questions. I went, I have no idea what they're talking about. Missed it. And then afterwards think, yeah, why did they ask it like that? I know that stuff. So many times I'm looking at questions that are like worded strange or obfuscated. And I have no idea what they're talking about. And when I see the example or I work out, work through the question, I go, oh, of course, that's the answer. I knew that. So be aware. It helps to, you know, get some exam-like questions. You typically can find those on Udemy. And set a date. This is really important because your brain actually runs, works faster, actually learns faster as you approach a date or a deadline. Now, just to let you know that when you set a date, or if you're going to a testing center, you can change that date typically two, two times. And I have in the past, uh, but make sure you change them early enough because for some exam centers, it's 48 hours, some 24. If you don't change it within the 24 hour period, you can't change it. When it comes to study plans, I, I love Abraham Lincoln's quote. Give me six hours to chop down a tree and I'll spend the first four hours sharpening the ax. I will spend a lot of time developing a study plan. If you do one of my study plans all the way through, you will pass the exam because I have been. So that I write them for me, but I give them to you for free on the meetup. So please, I'll show you a couple in a moment. With that, I have a number of question techniques that I use when I take an exam. And my first uh, technique is I read the answer first. Now, why do I do that? Well, there's a scientific reason for it. And that's because questions are made from right answers, not from wrong answers. But typically, you have something in mind. You have um, a concept, an architecture, a principle in mind when you write that question. So when you read the answers, you're trying to think, of what is the concept? What is the principle? What is the architecture that they have in mind for this question? 
And that's why you want to read those first. And then if you can't figure it out just from the answers, then you'll read pretty much the last part of the question. We'll have, we'll have the uh, keywords or whatever you might look for. Now, what am I looking for? Well, I have five things here. Single answer, single answer with concept, paired words, keywords, and filtering. And then I'm going to talk about brain browsing with chat GDP. This is something new that I'm starting to do. And we'll do it from now on, believe me. All right, so here's an example of one of my study plans that you would get with a meetup, and this is AZ305. And we just did this one uh, presentation, like I said, a couple of weeks ago. And coming up on February 11th, we're doing the DP203. And this is called Mike Ain't Got Time Study Plan. Because once I used to create these study plans, they were so complicated. Someone said to me, said, Mike, I just ain't got time. <laughs> so I started simplifying them and also trying to make them very cost efficient. So you really don't have to pay a lot of money for these um, resources. So in this particular study plan, I'll just go over it real quick. We start with the Microsoft Docs, and I want you to start looking at questions right away. And that's called somewhere to hang your hat. As you start reading questions, you don't quite know the answer. When you're reading the docs and you see that, it keys in, oh, that was in the question. I remember that. I know what that is. Also, uh, I will go to a Wiz Labs, which is really easy to do questions. But also, I, I'm looking at the, the lab, labs as well. And like I said, I mentioned earlier, I am now using ChatGDP to turn those labs into Terraform and run them in Terraform. And what's nice about Terraform, if you run that, you um, you basically just hit destroy and it eliminates everything you created. However, if you renew the cloud, let me recommend you to use a Wiz Labs or something like that that has a free lab in it because uh, you can run up expense very rapidly. And I have. I've woken up some mornings and had a $500 bill. You don't want to do that, especially when you're just learning. And sometimes they'll forgive you. So if that happens to you, uh, get on your hands and knees and go to the cloud provider and say, I made a mistake. I was just practicing. Can you forgive me? And most likely they may. With that said, there's a nice YouTube uh, by Tech Blackboard on a 216 questions and Cloud Saga. That's a nice Udemy dump. Always with Udemy, wait for the deal. Uh, I mean, last week, in the middle of the week, it was $54. And toward this weekend, it was uh, 12. So I waited the weekend and paid 12 to get the, the 213 questions. That will help you prepare for exam-like questions. I'm not encouraging that you memorize answers. But what I'm encouraging that you take the knowledge that you know and increase your understanding. Because a lot of these question uh, dumps like Sagas has detailed explanations. And you want to go through the explanations and get in a learning mode, learn as much as you can. All right, cool. This is an example of a study plan. Let's talk about some more techniques. So the first technique I talk about is single answer. And when you read the answers, typically these are going to be an answer in here that is always going to be right. I'll give you an example. A number of years ago, I was taking a, a AWS exam, and they just created this new service they were very proud of. And when I, I saw that new service in the uh, in one of the questions, I knew they were trying to sell it. I just marked it and just went on. I didn't even <laughs> read the question. And it was always right because that was the question. Some, some uh, answers don't pair well. And that's why uh, you, you can typically do like, for example, ADDS does not pair well. So when you see ADDS in a question, you know that's the answer. It's hard to obfuscate. Here's another example I want to talk about. If you're not quite sure what cloud cycle is, then you can just throw it into ChatGPT and say, give me the answer. And it will. So ChatGDP can act as a study buddy. And for example, it says Azure Cloud Cycle is a solution that can be used to manage and provision HPC clusters. So there it is, kind of a keyword, Cloud Cycle and HPC. But I just knew it was Cloud Cycle because that doesn't pair well with any other answer. With that said, let me give you a little bit of warning. Chat GDP can be thought of as a table. Okay, And everything in the table, as long as it's on the table, it will be right. But there's an edge of that table that it can fall off, right? Or it doesn't know the answer. But ChatGDP is a wonderful natural language processor, and it will give you an answer that you think is right. <laughs> it's very good at talking to people. So it could give you a wrong answer. So one of the things you can do is actually install a Chrome extension that gives you search links, and you can look at those links and confirm that the answer was correct. All right. But that said, the next technique is single answer with concept. So here I'm looking at the answers. I see them as shared access signature. I know that's only for a temporary time, right? That gives access for a temporary time. So if I look up in the question, and specifically I look at the bottom part of the question, you can see a specific period of time. Oh, that's it. So I know that's the answer. All right, let's do another one. Paired words. Uh, typically in the exam, you'll probably get these boxes where you have two boxes you have to figure out, and you or drop downs, you figure out what's right for each box. But I'm going to go to the second box first and see if there's anything that pairs with the top box. And you're going to see if you want to have uh, Alex lock space, if you want to have log analytics -like workspace, you have to do the Azure install. So I actually could pair those two words together. Next one. 
is keywords. Uh, there's certain words that go with other words. And so if I see Azure Service Bus, I know that's an XML uh, message service. All right, filtering. Filtering is a little bit more complex, but here's a table that shows Azure Front Door, Traffic Manager, Application Gateway, and Azure Load Balancer. And there's a series of yes, no questions that you might find, or other questions on Azure Load Front Door that you might find on the exam. And what you need to determine, are they talking about a global service or a regional service? Are they talking about HTTPS or non-HTTPS? And if you keep this in your mind, you can answer those type of questions. You can actually get four questions from this. And this question says, you're planning to deploy multiple copies of an Azure web app across multiple Azure regions. To provide access to the app, a solution must be designed that meets the following requirements, ability to limit the number of requests, ability to distribute requests among all instances, the ability to ensure users can still access the app in case of regional failures. That took me a long time to read. But what if I didn't read it like that? What if I look at the answers first? Azure Traffic Manager, Azure Load Balancer, Azure Gateway, Azure Front Door. Well, what kind of, look, look at the last part of the questions. The app in case of regional failure. Oh, regional failures, it means it has to be a global service, which means it's going to be Azure Traffic Manager or it's going to be Azure Front Door. Oh, but an app, oh, that's got to be HTTPS, which means it has to be Azure Front Door. So that's the answer. The last thing I want to talk about is brain browsing using chat TDP. This lit my brain up. Matter of fact, the first time I started doing this, I could not sleep. I had to force myself or I was going to work all night. And the way this works is this. Your brain can only pay attention for 20 minutes. After that, you have to entertain it. You have to let it relax. And typically, the way some of us do that, working from home, is we browse the internet. We browse YouTube. So, uh, for example, I'll work for it really hard for 20 minutes, and I'll go watch a video on the Ukraine war because I was previous military. Or I'll go watch a video on... Um, COVID because I was previous EPA, or I'll watch a video on fitness because I'm a fitness nut. So <laughs> that's how I entertain my brain. But what if I could develop a technique where I'm actually entertaining my brain with inside the content? And that's what I did. I would take the content and make my own adventure story using chat GP and Dali. -E. It was just so much fun. Let me show an example. So here's an example where I, I was ne my next study concept was Azure Data Explorer. Well, as opposed to going through a boring question, I would just type into chat TDP, what kind of Western story would go with Azure Data Explorer? And it would make one up. It's like, once upon a time in the Wild West, a group of cowboys were tasked with managing the cattle on a vast ranch. They're responsible for keeping track of the location and health of cattle, as well as monitoring their feed and water supply. As a ranch crew, the cowboys found it increasingly difficult to keep track of all the data manually. And it keeps going on, and its, it's story is correct. And notice that there's links here. So you typically heard that ChatGPT does not do links. However, if you install and install the web chat extension, the web chat GPT extension, then you can actually search the web. You can turn this off and on if you need to. And there's certain regions where there's certain things you're trying to get a chat GDP that won't work if it's turned on and will if it is and is. So you'll figure that out as you move through it. But that's what I did. So that allowed me to search other links and learn more about the topic. And so now I begin kind of browsing the content and having a lot of fun. Here's another one I did. It was a lot of fun. Write a screenplay where a laughing clown teaches Mike, a new IT intern, why Azure role-based access control is important and how it is used. I, and the weirder it is, the sillier it is, the better your mind is going to remember it. And there's all these techniques out there which allow you to uh, do like memory palaces and all the memory tricks that you've seen used by the gurus in the past can be, uh, uh, ChatGPT knows what they are and can do that and make it really fun and exciting to study. So Mike, a new intern is sitting at his desk, staring at his computer, looking confused. Suddenly a clown appears uh, out of nowhere, startling Mike. Hey there, buddy. I'm here to teach you all about role-based role access control. <laughs> Mike is taken back by the clown's sudden appearance. Nervous, you know, oh, okay. <laughs> this so is fun. So it takes it something so boring and just makes it exciting. And so your brain's relaxing and having fun, but still learning the content. Often thought if I searched, uh, if I as much time as I spend searching the web and watching YouTubes, if I could do that in learning, right, then I could actually um, just accelerate my pace of how long this stuff retained. And it's turned out that's exactly what happened. So that said, uh, I actually timed myself. I won't go through it, but we'll go through the questions. And I'll show you what the time was at the end, but we're gonna do 14 questions. The actual um, exam was 56 questions. So this is 25% of the exam. Let's see how quickly using these techniques we can get through this. So I just read the answers. The B-Core based uh, Azure SQL. Well, immediately 
I know this is a paired concept. That's the correct answer. So I went to the next one. All right, I saw Azure Config Service, Azure Registry Instance, Deployment Sluts. Oh, that's a key word. I know that. And that's a case study. So I immediately got that for free without reading the case study. Next one, um, Cinder Grid, Action Groups. Uh, oh, Connect Health. Well, that's, I can use the Azure AD Connect Health if I want to communicate with something or get a notification. And there you got notification here in the question. That's the answer. All right, next one. Um, Private endpoint, that is a keyword that you see, you know that's gonna be the answer, but you might wanna go check the case study just to make sure that's right. Next one, I'm gonna look at this AZ copy, Azure, Azure Data Factory. You see Azure Data Factory a lot, and what that means is doing some type of ETLs, some type of processing or pushing data. And is that up here in this question? You see data pipeline and copy data to a blog on a monthly basis. Well, that's the answer. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Um, Azure Migrate, well, that pairs with VMs. OVM environment. Oh, that's the correct answer. Move on. Next one. Um, automation cycle, cycle cloud. Oh, that's cycle cloud. We've seen that before. Unique to itself. Whenever you see that, it's hard to, to obfuscate with other words. You know that's it. Here's the next one. Um, activity logs, Azure Application Insights. Pretty popular. Could be any of these. If I see Azure Application Insights, that's going to have something to do with applications. So I go up to the my up to the first part. Um uh, insights about performance and issues of web app, oh, app application. That's it. Next one. Okay, I see vCore compute. vCore standalone. And what they're trying to do, there's this concept that with vCore, you can get a financial savings. They want to nail that in. That's the correct answer. Next one. We've seen this one already. I saw on the second one first, do install Azure Monitor there. That goes with log analytics. That's correct. Let's go to the next one. Oh, ADD, ADDS. Oh, I, I know that's a unique word. It's going to stand alone. That's correct. Next one, okay, virtual nodes and cluster nodes. Okay, it's gonna be either one of these. Virtual nodes goes with Linux machines, cluster nodes with auto scaling. So what we're kind of doing is filtering in keywords here. So I see here Windows, that is um, cluster auto scaling. Next one, I see Linux, that is virtual nodes. Number 14, okay, so I see Azure front door. So that means I'm gonna see regional, that's gonna be correct. Oh, there's regional. And does it have that something to do with an application? Oh, app right here or up here, app web service, done. So I did that in about two minutes. And that's a quarter of the exam. So four times two is eight minutes, which means if I was hustling and, I, and it all went smooth, I could have finished this exam in eight. I didn't, I finished it in 15, which means there's a few questions I had to stop and concentrate on because I wasn't sure or a little bit of reading I was, had to do. But that's how... I finished this exam in 15 minutes. Now, let me go ahead and give you my suggestion. Don't do this at first, okay? You may fall into a deep hole and never get out of it. Typically in the past when I've flunked exams and I have flunked exams, I never take that exam again. I just take another one. And I gotta tell you, you have to take a few of these techniques, you know, and practice them and get good at them as you go through my study plans. And, and, and what you'll find out, you'll be doing these exams faster and faster, and you'll start ending 10 minutes early, 20 minutes early, an hour early. I don't know if I'll ever do 15 minutes uh, again. It really surprised me. But uh, this works best for this particular technique for like journalist exams. Exams are very broad where they can't get really deep into the material, but you have to put everything together as a puzzle. So uh, thanks for listening. <laughs> so join the meetup, you know, and, and come and listen and interact with people. It's free and you'll get some free study plans to help you, uh, you know, do well. And once again, uh, when you're, you're taking these exams, read the answers first and practice single answer, single answer with concept, paired words, keywords, filtering. And my Lord, brain browsing using chat GP. How exciting. My wife says she's never seen me study for an exam so hard. I got to tell you, just, just lit my brain up. So thanks for listening and uh, I'll see you at a meetup or I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.